Here we are on a downwind leg for landing, runway 15, Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral, Florida. 4,000 miles per hour, 120,000 feet, no engine power at all. If we don't make a sharp turn back towards the field, we're going to end up in the state of Georgia. Heading down deeper into the atmosphere to get a better bite of thicker air for this turn. Banking steeply for a 4G into the seat left turn. Forward speed slowing at 11 meters per second per second, approximately 1G. This 4G turn with 1G forward deceleration is a result of the 4 to 1 lift to drag ratio of this United States Space Shuttle. The cross with the circle around it on the heads up display is a velocity vector indicator. It shows which direction the ship is heading. The inverted V above it shows which way the nose is pointing. The difference between the two is the angle of attack. That's shown as AOA at the bottom right of the attitude indicator display. G-forces are relaxing now. The real space shuttle has a load limit of 2.5 Gs, so a 4G turn would bend some metal. But that's okay, we're having fun on this completely manual approach. At this stage, the real space shuttle would be flown under computer guidance with the pilot moving the nose to follow a computer generated dot on the heads up display. We're just going to use our own judgment on this today. Right now you can see the whole Florida Peninsula with Cape Canaveral coming into view on the left. What we have now is an energy management problem if we are too fast, we'll overshoot the runway. If we are too slow, we will land short of the runway. When the space shuttle is first entering the atmosphere from Earth orbit, it controls energy by roll angle control. By controlling roll angle, it controls the depth, the altitude it's at in the atmosphere, which controls the rate of deceleration. On this terminal phase of the approach, energy management is best controlled by pitch angle. So if we want to conserve energy, preserve speed, we pitch up to an angle of attack between 10 and 12 degrees, which maximizes lift to drag ratio and keeps us higher in the atmosphere where the air is thinner. If we want to lose energy, we pitch down and that will cause us to gain speed at first, but very quickly we'll lose speed from passing through the denser air. What works well for this simulated shuttle is a speed of 500 meters per second, 100 kilometers from the runway. The distance from the field is shown in white text at the bottom of the map display. Right now, 127 kilometers from the field. We are getting a bit slow, so we're holding that higher angle of attack, staying higher in the atmosphere to conserve our speed so that we meet our target. We're also turning in a fairly shallow turn, which also helps conserve energy. We're not in that big of a hurry to get lined up on center line. Priority is conserving energy. Coming up on 100 kilometers. Distance, 100 kilometers. Speed, 580 meters per second. That is a bit faster than target, but should still work. Continuing the left turn, we are to the right of runway center line, so we're going to continue to left turn to move the velocity vector indicator to the left side of the field. We are also going to hold the velocity vector indicator above the runway, runway coming into sight now, 
Holding it above the runway will steepen our approach to the runway. We want a glide slope of approximately 3 to 1. We're going to get that by looking for the PAPI lights, the Precision Approach Indicator lights. On a normal airport runway, the PAPI lights are located past the runway threshold. On the runways at Kennedy Space Center, the PAPI lights are located before the runway. This is to accommodate the long pre-flare maneuver that shuttles have to do just before landing because of their steep approach. When we see the PAPI lights and we, and we see that their color is red and white, that will mean we're on glide slope and it is time to pitch down to put the velocity vector indicator down to the same level as the PAPI lights. And that is just about now. We can see the red and white colors of the PAPI lights in front of the runway. We are going to put the velocity vector indicator down on top of the PAPI lights. Same level as the PAPI lights as we work to get on the center line. We are going to hold that velocity vector on top of the PAPI lights until we reach an altitude of 1,500 meters. Once we reach 1,500 meters, we'll begin the pre-flare maneuver. The art of the pre-flare and the landing flare that follows it is to pitch up to move that velocity vector indicator towards the horizon, listening to the radio altimeter callouts as we do that so that the velocity vector indicator ends up one degree below the horizon as we are just above the runway at 10 meters at a speed of 100 up to 130 meters per second. If we pitch up too soon, we'll run out of speed high above the runway. If we pitch up too late, we'll slam into the runway. still holding that velocity vector indicator on the PAPI lights until we reach the pre-flare altitude. You are clear to land. 2,500. Speed is a bit excessive, lowering landing gear early. Gear deployed. Starting the pre-flare maneuver. 1,000. Still too fast. Deploy speed brake. Speed brake deployed. 500. 400. 300. 200. 100. 50. 40. 30, 20, 10, 10. That was a really nice touchdown on the main wheels, but the nose gear came down quite hard. I derotated about twice as fast as I should have.
are clear to land.